What an honor to be your friend, Pastor Chris Gilkey. You're amazing, and we love Reach Church family so much. So let us just jump straight into the Word. Can we do that? Today, uh, you are in a series called The Immortals, and I will try to tie into your series and talk about a woman of God in the Bible called Elizabeth. How many of you remember Elizabeth, who was the wife of Zechariah and the mother of John the Baptist? So we can go to Luke's gospel together, the first chapter, and we will dive in there. As you are going there, I want to say that your destiny is too great to be reached on your own. How many of you know that? You need a circle to connect with. You need people to connect with. No one is that powerful that you don't need the others, right? And um, uh, there is an expression here in America, I hear it from time to time, you can't soar like an eagle if you're hanging with the turkeys. How many of you have heard that? And you can't be a giant killer if you are hanging, you know. Yeah, 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 first you've got to be the giant killer's friend, right? You've got to be around uh, uh, greatness to achieve greatness yourself, isn't it? And you've got to connect with the right people in order to achieve what God has put in your life. And I've always said that if you desire to be a warrior, you have to stop playing with dolls, period. Uh, and I believe that the Holy Spirit is going to and will replace negative people from your life with positive ones. Can you say amen to that? So let's go into the Word together. We are going to Luke's Gospel, uh, chapter 1 and verse 39, and we're going to read from there. It says like this. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. And uh, when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. It says, in a loud voice, she exclaimed, blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? And as soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. And uh, then she continues, blessed is she who has believed that was um, of the Lord has come. And, and, he, and, and then Mary says, my soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Isn't this an amazing text? Okay, let me, uh, uh, let, me, let me take you into this a little bit. Number one today, I want to talk about your inner circle and how important it is that you surround yourself with the right people. And number one is always connect with people that carries the seed of your future destiny. All right? You see, when Elizabeth met with Mary, there was a huge time difference. Huh? Uh, uh, there was an age difference. They are... They were of different classes, these two ladies, right? Elizabeth, um, we don't really know how old she was, but she had, she, she had passed 50 at least. And, and Mary was a teenager. So you could say uh, there's not much to connect there, right? But they carried something else that connected them. And I want you to see this, that we don't just connect with people because we are of the same era, the same country, or the same culture. I mean, I am from Europe, Chris is from America, but we connect because we carry something on our inside. Are you getting what I'm saying? And Elizabeth carried John the Baptist, and Mary was carrying Jesus the Savior, and these two babies were going to work together in the future. And you've got to understand that your life is not just about you and now. You carry something in your spirit that is about tomorrow. You carry something of God. You carry a destiny, a God-given call. And what you carry needs to connect with other people's destinies. And your destiny has to connect with their destiny. And when you meet with people that are very, very not like you at times. Are you here? I think it's so beautiful that black and white or brown or yellow or purple doesn't matter in the kingdom of God, isn't it? I think it's so wonderful that age doesn't matter in the kingdom of God. And I think it's so wonderful that education or class doesn't matter in the kingdom of God. Can you say amen? We connect because we carry something in our spirits. 
And as Christian people, we are not just connecting because people are having the right codes or the right clothes or listening to the right music. We connect because they carry something that connects with what we carry. So when, when you are looking for your inner circle, and I think each and every one needs an inner circle. That's why you need to join the small groups. That's why you need to be part of a book of Acts fellowship. That's why you need to be discipled, you know, in a close circle of friends. Okay, number two, connect with people that sharpens you, that are stronger than you. I don't know where you are coming from, but I can tell you this. Uh, and I'm not going to say this in any cocky way or, or any, any, any way that, you know, that, that I despite what I'm coming from. But just to tell you, I come from ghetto background, all right? Everyone was divorced not one time, but three times, you know? Uh, everyone was fighting addictions. Everyone was fighting issues and depths. Can anyone relate to this? This is where I'm from. And, and it was very hard to rise above that. That is what you were programmed for. That is what you were set to do in life. I come from a tiny little miner's village down in South Austria towards the Slovenian-Italian border where we were doing three things, I always tell them. We drank beers, we picked the fight, and we played cards. Sometimes, sometimes we mixed up the order a little bit, but that was, that was what we did. And it was very hard to, to rise above that. Uh, and, and, and when I came to Jesus, I can tell you, that was my only chance to get out. My only chance to connect with something that was pure and wonderful. Is there anyone else in here that are thankful for Jesus and the gospel of Jesus and how that lifted you out of the filth, huh? lifted you out of the dirt and out of the mud? And when I got to know Jesus, I was also brought together with people that I never ever thought I was going to work with. When I was a 19-year-old kid down in Austria, I mean, I, I'm, I'm telling you, I, I couldn't imagine myself serving great apostles in Africa or working with prime ministers or foreign ministers as I do from time to time. I couldn't see that. But God had plans. And I think that God has plans for all of us and for all of you. And I'd like to speak a word to you that helps you, okay? Okay. You are going to be lifted out of the circumstances you are in right now if you dare to connect with the kick in your spirit. So when the baby inside of you leaps for joy and kicks, okay, you know that I got to connect with this person. This is a person that carries my future destiny and the seed of my future destiny. But number two, we also need to connect with people that are stronger than us. Some people are so intimidated, they always have to hang around with people that they can intimidate. You know what I'm saying? But we need to be better than at the schoolyard. Better and higher if you want to reach somewhere than just being around those that we can bully. Are you here? We need to be around people that actually offends us from time to time. That gets on our nerves from time to time. That sharpens us because otherwise we won't go nowhere. Can you connect with this? A uh, proverb says, uh, 27 verse 17, that iron sharpens iron, and so one man sharpens another, isn't it? And we need to hang around giant killers. We need to hang around people that are on, on a different level. I never finished high school. I was drunk in high school. Uh, and I needed, I, 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 I can tell you this, when I married Maria, I, I, I married a middle class girl. Hallelujah. <laughs> and it's not been easy. It's not been easy. She's been going after uh, me farting in the car and picking my nose in public. And, you know, she's been going after how I hold fork and knife. And she's, I mean, it, uh, pretty much everything had to change. Uh, but hanging around her and her middle-aged upbringing was not a Christian upbringing, but it was a thinking, a mentality that I needed. I thought about Maria this morning, thought about my wife this morning. She would say to me, we are going to buy a house. I said, why are we buying a house? Let's live flexible. You know, I, I, I lived in the surviving mentality that you have to run every second week. Get everything you own into the car and just drive. I don't know if you can relate to that. So, so why should we let us be flexible? But she said, why should we make someone else rich when we can make ourselves rich? And that was like a revelation to me. Wow. 
you can own something. You can build equity, you see. You can invest for your future. You can, and and, and all, all of her thinking was on another level. And when I was together with her, I sharpened my own thinking and got somewhere else. Can you see what I'm saying? So a wife can be that, but also friends can be that to you. And spiritual leaders can be that to you where you are sharpened. All right. Number three, you need to remove people from your life that despises and laughs at your words, your visions, and your dreams. You said remove? Yeah, I said remove. You can't have people around you that are despising you all the time. What's a problem with my family that when God started to bless me, are you here now? They love the blessings, but not the source of the blessing. They love to be around what God did in my life, but they didn't want to be around my Jesus. It's a problem. How many of you get what I'm saying? They wanted to laugh at the Jesus that gave me the resources to do what I did. They wanted to be in the house. They wanted to hang around, but they didn't want to show up on Sunday mornings. How many of you know that there can be annoying people in your life that drains you to move further? And no one wants to talk about that. Huh? That's hard because it, it includes loyalty, and it, it, you know, isn't it? And it includes uh, sometimes deep family bonds. But I want to talk about Jesus when I do this because Jesus actually removed people from his inner circle from time to time. And if Jesus needed to, maybe you need to do that from time to time. In Mark's gospel chapter 5, Jesus is on his way to raise up a dead girl. How many of you remember Jairus is the synagogue ruler's daughter? And as he is on his way, we read from Mark 5 and verse 35. I'm going to quote out of this text. Um, they are coming to Jairus, the people of Jairus' household, and say, Why are you bothering the master? I mean, your girl has died. It's over. And it says that Jesus ignored what they were saying ignoring what they were saying he told Jairus don't be afraid just believe and then they they move to the house and when they come to the house people are wailing and crying and mourning how many of you remember the story and Jesus says no 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 why are you doing this the daughter is just asleep and they are then laughing at him and then it says very clear that Jesus put them all out hello he put them all out. And he didn't even take all his 12 disciples into the room when he was going to ra raise a dead girl. He only took Peter, James, and John. Why? Because these were probably the three in his circle of friends that carried faith, vision, encouragement. And if you want to raise the dead, are you listening here now? You can't have the wailing crowd, the wailing crowd, and the mourning crowd. In the room from time to time. you got to put them out. You can't have people that never believes in your declarations of faith. And what you believe you are going to take. Where you're going to take, you know, your loved ones and your family. So sometimes you need to put the, those with a critique. Those, those, those wailers. Those doubters. Okay. Take them out. Um, and, 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 and here's this other thing I want to say that. You can't have the laughing people around you all the time either. People that just want to crack jokes, you know. Never want to be serious, you know. Never ever want to kneel down and repent of sins. Are you here? Never ever want to be humble before God. But then you're just taking everything like it is a game. No, you can't have them around either. There won't be any dead raised if you can never ever be serious with God. Are you hearing me? That won't happen. So if you want to see the dead raised, make sure you have the right people in your inner circle. So, and then some people say, but then, I mean, almost every one of them needs to go. Well, you need to have a mixture here. Of course, you need some non-Christians in your inner circle because you want to win people. And you need to have some just saved in your inner circle because you want to disciple people. But the majority of your inner circle cannot be weaker than you. The majority of your inner circle needs to be stronger than you. Because otherwise you are going backwards and not forwards. So you need to have a good mix here. I have a lot of non-Christian friends where I live. I have a lot of just Christian friends where I live. And I disciple and I try to win people. But the rest of them, listen up now, are people that are winning more disciples than me. 
that are praying harder than me. Are you here? That are challenging me. I love to be around my African brothers and sisters because they challenge me in ways that I will not be challenged around my European and American friends. Are you here? They challenge me on all kinds of lifestyle points. Okay? They challenge me on fasting, on praying, on not drinking, on this, on that. Are you? And I need them to stay on track. I humbly just accept that I need people that are stronger than me, sharper than me, more powerful than me in order to go forward. Can you say amen? amen. So don't avoid people that are stronger than you. Where am I doing time-wise? I'm, I'm, I, I can't see where. Six. Okay. All right. All right. Look at this. Number three. If you have removed doubt, laughter, if you have filled your inner circle with people of vision, faith, and encouragement, you also need to take this one to your heart, number four. Don't listen to everyone's opinions. Hello. How many of you have heard the story about <laughs> granddaddy and grandson going to town? Uh, they were taking the donkey. This is an African story. You know I'm an African missionary. And uh, so the granddaddy wanted to give his, his son a wonderful, uh, you know, his grandson a wonderful experience. So he put the grandson on the donkey. And he's leading the donkey to town. Can you see them? People meeting them on the road says, what kind of a boy are you letting this old man walk and you ride the donkey? And after they've heard five or six people say that, they shift places. So granddaddy jumps on top of the donkey and the grandson has to walk, you know, by, by the side. He's five years old. And, and then people start again. What kind of a granddaddy are you? Huh? Letting, I mean, what's, what's the matter with you? You are riding and you're letting this little, little boy walk next to you. So after a while, he, he takes them, the son up, you know, in front of him. And they both ride the donkey. And then, then the people start again. What kind of people are you? How cruel are you tormenting that poor donkey with all that overweight? I mean, what's the matter with you? You can't be two on that donkey. So finally they carried the donkey to town. How many of you get what I'm saying? So the question is, you know, if you listen, you know, if, 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 if you are the one that always listens to everyone's opinions, here it is, you will be carrying the donkey to town. You won't go anywhere. Sometimes you just have to go with what you have in here and go with the circle of friends you have here and ignore everyone and each and everyone's opinions. Are you hearing me? Then the dead will be raised. Then miracles will happen. Many, many times when, when everyone has spoken to me that this is not possible. Some of you, some of you know me since, since, some, since some time back. Some of you are, are just listening to me for the first time. But... I've been traveling throughout Africa for almost 30 years preaching the gospel. And we had this enormous um, festival equipment, you know, stage, light, sound. And, and, and uh, last year in August, everything burned. It burned down to the ground in a tragic truck accident. Uh, a semi truck full of petrol rammed our truck and nine trucks went up in flames. And everything we had disappeared. All right? So we needed new gear <laughs> very quick because we had super big festivals and things coming up. And I went out and within six months I needed to raise 1.5 million U.S. dollars for this new equipment. Next to the other budgets that we had with churches and Bible schools. And stuff. I mean, this was, should we say, it was not included in the budget. Huh? And you know what's not included in the budget will freak some accountants out. How many of you know what I'm talking about? So, so we, everyone was telling me this is impossible. But God gave me supernatural peace. I got this. I will upgrade you. I'm going to do something amazing in your life. This, uh, the, these trucks burning, that was actually my blessing to you. And uh, believe it or not, but we raised 1.7 million U.S. dollars within six months. And a brand new equipment stood there this summer as we went into our festivals. So sometimes you can't listen to people's opinions. You can't shrink back. Are you here? You need to set out towards your going and set up with a goal. I'm here to tell you today, and I want you to hear this. This, 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 this. this will land inside of you like a prophetic bomb. Are you hearing me? God will lift you. 
And he's going to replace the negative people in your life with positive ones. You are not going to be in that filthy, okay, environment. Are you hearing me now? That stinky environment that will take you out. No, you are coming higher. You are going to another level. Are you hearing me? You will reach your God-given potential and your God-given destiny. God has a plan for your life and God will let you feel the kick in your spirit and you will connect with the right people. Okay, number five. Choose your environment. All right. Why am I around Chris Gilkey? Well, Chris Gilkey challenges me. Chris Gilkey wants me to become a warrior. And I want to be around him because I've become a better man of God around him. And you see, why have I chosen not to listen to each and every podcast on the planet? Why am I not following every preacher that is out there? Because I don't want 10, 15 voices in my life. Are you hearing me? I want the voices that I know God wants me to hear. And I want to follow that path. Are you hearing me? Because only then will I reach the destiny. So choose your environment. Remember that the frog is boiled slowly. Each and every one of you have heard that story, right? The, the, the frog is boiled slowly. And I can just say this, that if you hang around the wrong crowd, you will smell too, either you want it or not. We have this old lady in our church, God bless her heart, but she has so much perfume on that when I hug her in church, then I smell for three days, even if I shower. How many of you know what I'm saying? So if, if Maria has been working at the hospital that particular Sunday, and I am in church by myself, and we are coming home and we meet, she, she does like this, okay, she was in church today. I mean, it sits in my clothes. It sits on my skin. I, I don't know what she, what, what she does. She, she must take a bath in that perfume or something. But it, uh, when I hang around, are you hearing me now? People that are bitter. People that are full of gossip. Okay, if I sit in the seat of mockers like Psalm 1, huh? verse 1 says, I will start to smell too. Choose your environment. If you want to see miracles, you can't go to Nazareth. You need to go to Capernaum. You need to hang with the right crowd, right? right? Mark's Gospel chapter 6 says that when they anchored in Gennesaret, when they anchored in Capernaum, people were already recognizing Jesus running up through the area, getting the sick on mats and beds to where he were. He didn't even have to touch them. No, they touched him and everyone were healed. Are you hearing me? But in Nazareth, Jesus could only heal a few sick by laying on of hands. Big difference. Big difference. Couldn't do any miracles because it was the wrong environment. If Jesus was bound to the right environment, maybe you should be a little humble too, right? And be where God wants you to be and where He has called you to be. My grace, number one, is in Africa because God has called me to Africa. When I'm there, everyone says I'm a different man. Why? Because I'm in the environment God has called me to be in. When I'm in other people's environments, i got to be sure that I'm covered by the grace of their calling. Are you here? That I serve under their calling. Then it can be a blessing. But I can't not be a blessing. Are you listening to me? By my own everywhere. i got to know that I'm in my grace zone to be a blessing. And if I'm not in my grace zone, i got to be in someone else's grace zone and submit to that grace. Say amen. If you know something about the apostolic, you catch what I'm saying there. I believe many of you, are, many of you, you having your time approaching right now. This will be the last I say before we're going to pray. But I believe your time is coming. Are you hearing me? And God sent me to prepare you. You are not going to stay where you are. You are not meant for the chicken yard. You will fly like an eagle. Okay? You're not meant just to play with dolls. No. You will flex your muscles and become a warrior. You are meant for more than what you are in now. And God has sent me to you to shoot this prophetic word into you. Are you hearing me? God will remove the negative people from your life and surround you with positive heroes. You need to... Join your tribe of heroes and warriors. Elizabeth teaches us that, you know. 
She had nothing in common with Mary but the future destiny she was carrying on her inside. And Mary had nothing in common with Elizabeth but the future destiny she was carrying. Connect with that. All right?